Jackson versus Wainwright, which is a landmark decision in 1963. So we're still fighting a law from 1963 about the state of New York paying its fair share. But that Supreme Court decision that decided that everyone, regardless of social status or income, has a right to counsel even if they can't afford one. Even if they can't afford one. And when we talk about the scales of justice, we talk about the same outcome, whether you have a high power attorney and you have millions of dollars you can fight your case, and someone doesn't, they go in the case for DWI, and if you look across the state of New York, the outcome's always different. The person that can't afford the legal representation comes out with a harder sentence, more fines than someone that has money. Since then, I have stood in front of you and have repeatedly said the poor of New York, accused of crime, who cannot afford and mount a legal defense, deserve to receive the best representation available. We have fallen short in this area. In October of 2014, I had my office look at how we could bring about changes and how state funds engine it defense. I'd like to thank my Deputy County Executive, Phil Calderon, my counsel, uh, that really helped me formulate this bill for engine defense when we put this together. But I want to especially thank Pat Fahey for being the champion, grabbing this bill and getting it through the Assembly, and Senator DeFrancisco who got it through the Senate. Senate, because without them two, we wouldn't be standing here today. And I want to thank everyone in both houses that voted for this overwhelmingly. But. It took some effort in convincing, but we were successful this year and passed the required phase and takeover. It's a phase and takeover where the state since 1963 should have been paying this from the beginning. We're just asking for a phase in over the next couple of years. The first quarter of my preaching ministry was spent serving in the south end of Albany. I frequently appeared in police and county court advocating on behalf of indigent defendants and witnessed firsthand the inadequate defense that overworked public defenders were able to accord those who would not afford to pay for an attorney. Unfortunately, not much has changed over the past four decades. In fact, things have become more unfair. The New York State Bar Association documents that the average public defender in the vast majority of New York's state counties, handles over 700 cases annually, providing an average of four hours per case. A state takeover of uh, indigent legal defense will make these programs more cost effective and more efficient simply because the state is, uh, will ultimately be paying um, their share of the bill and uh, that's going to that's gonna force um, um, efficiencies into the program. Um, a state takeover of indigent defense costs phased in over seven years will help eliminate property tax increases in the future and that phase in is critical to counties because the program's costs will continue to expand and it will be more and more difficult for counties to remain under the the property tax cap. So on behalf of the New York State Association of Counties, we'd like to express our support for this legislation and encourage the governor to, uh, to sign it. Thank you. Now there is the opportunity for the state to take the next major step in assuring quality representation. The bill that was passed by both houses and has been referred to, sponsored by Senators DeFrancisco and Assemblywoman Fahey, would over seven years transfer funding for this responsibility to the state where it belongs, and where steps can be taken to overcome the deficiencies in counties that are unable to appropriately fund this function. The State Bar Association supported this bill during the 2016 legislative session, and we are here to join with everybody standing up here in urging the governor to sign this bill. The New York State Conservative Party supports the 1963 U.S. Supreme Court decision of Gideon versus Wainwright, which was a Florida case, that upheld the fact that sixth, the Sixth Amendment's guarantee of counsel is a fundamental right essential to a fair trial and as such applies to the states with the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. What we do not support is that counties have been burdened with this expense. 
Well, the New York State recently sa uh, settled a lawsuit with five counties, giving them some financial relief. The rest of the counties in New York State will still have the full financial burden of providing lawyers for indigent citizens as mandated by the Gideon versus Wainwright case. Counties have several mandates that cause severe fiscal strain. Providing legal services for indigent citizens is just one, but it is one that is extremely hard to plan for in their budgets. Beleaguered counties need the relief that this bill offers. The sooner it is signed, the sooner the counties can plan, albeit it will be almost seven years before they are fully implemented. Unfunded mandates are restricting the liberty and freedom for more citizens that are entitled and certainly have earned by their hard work. The overregulation government continues to mandate on its citizens is almost to the point that discourages people from being financially successful members of society. The governor must sign the De Francisco Fahey bill to help address the racial disparity that permeates our entire criminal justice system. And if some of you missed it, you should look at the New York Times today and see the kinds of racial discrimination that we're experiencing in the prisons. Black civil rights lawyer Michelle Alexander made it abundantly clear that following the Civil Rights Act of 1964, our state and our nation tightly embraced the myth of colorblindness. And that allowed racism, a spirit of inequity, and differential treatment of the poor and people of color to be hidden within the lofty words of our written laws, policies, and practices. The intent may not be spelled out in Jim Crow language, but the impact of these policies, these practices, remain the same, racial disparity. Nowhere is this truer than in New York State's structurally dysfunctional public defense system that thrusts especially black clients into our jails and our prisons. Furthermore, color blindness operates within the system to deny people equal protection of the law while also at the same time blaming them for their fate because the system is deemed by many to be fair and just and even equitable. My organization, the Center for Law and Justice, is located in the middle of one of Albany's poorest neighborhoods, which provides us a first-hand look at how the system fails its clients. Each year, hundreds of poor people, mostly black and Latino, come to us seeking an alternative to the dreaded public defense system, which they mistrust and believe is hampered by too few, quote, real lawyers who will listen to them and effectively represent them in their desperate quest for fairness and justice. These clients perceive the system as yet another in a long list of denials of their constitutional rights and the promise that's inherent in Gideon. We give to them, unfortunately, the bad news that no alternative exists to provide them with adequate representation. One of the weaknesses uh, that I had learned while I was a public defender was a lack of funding available to carry out the necessary representation that was required and mandated by the United States and the New York State Constitution. One of the weaknesses that I discovered as a county attorney was that there was an equal amount of lack of adequate funding that would be provided by the board to be able to handle the mandates that had been thrust upon it. The difficulties that we have faced collectively uh, with our constituents, with our represented parties, um, is something that we have come together, I believe, collectively to challenge. To thank Senator DeFrancisco, to thank Assembly Member Fahey, the Assembly members and those senators that have already voted for this, but to call upon the governor to do something that is right to do something that is mandated on this state, 
to provide adequate counsel. And adequate counsel means providing funding. We need to change the system. We need to do what's right. And let me tell you, being in politics, it's no small fate that we'll all come together for this important issue because we see it as one of the most important issues this state government has faced in decades. And that's fixing what has been wrong. One thing they teach me in the military, and I'm still in over 20 some years in the military, we're taught no soldier gets left behind. In this case, no defendant should be left behind because they can't afford fair representation. In Ormond County, we've been trying to take them steps. I got our retired Judge Herrick now in charge of our public defenders. I brought Mr. Killen in to teach prosecutors a different way and get them the skills they need to defend people. We started an immigration office because the immigrants that come here get the same treatment. They, they plead to things they shouldn't because they don't know any better. So I do call on the governor to sign this bill, right, that's been wrong since 1965. And it's just, to me, it's not about unfunded mandate relief. To me, it's about representing the poor and people that cannot defend themselves legally.